Thanks to support from British forces, the German plan failed. The front line moved back to the north, and with the arrival of winter, froze. Soldiers holed up amid a vast labyrinth of trenches and tunnels that would become the indelible image of the Great War. Carl's regiment retreated to the outskirts of Neuchapelle, the same camp where Emile was being held prisoner. <laughs> wow. He loves eating sausage. It's great. Good for you. Can I get you anything else, sir? You want sausages, eh? Hey, buddy. He wants water. Okay. Uh, Wursthaus. That's this. Okay, this is where the Bratwurst would be. I imagine. Okay, water to fire to Bratwurst. No, nothing going on there. Who do we have here? A photo frame. Even though photography was not widespread, many soldiers had their photos taken before setting out for the war. Professional prints were developed on photo paper and applied to a hard backing to prevent tearing. Some photos were directly printed as postcards, especially group conscript photos. Oh, there's Carl. She's okay. Dearest Papa, we live in a climate of uncertainty. Germans use the people of Saint Miel as human shields against the French bombings. I hope the Germans treat you well and that your wound has healed. Your grandson sends you kisses. I sent you a picture of him. All my love. Please write soon. Yeah, I'm working on it. Okay, so letters. Uh, letters remain the only means of communication with the outside world. Radios and telephones were only used for military ends. All soldiers wrote to their loved ones back home. As war correspondence was free of charge, this created logistical and financial problems. Ten billion letters and postcards were sent to and from the front during the war. The early war postal system was chaotic, but then the front was... The, the early war postal system was chaotic, but then the front was then separated into sectors, each with its own postcode. The visit from the military postmaster was eagerly awaited. Six million POWs. Between 1914 and 1918, over six million men were taken prisoner, including 1.2 million German and 200,000 British troops. Despite the 1907 Hague Convention and the efforts of the International Red Cross, prison conditions and forced labor proved harsh for conscripts, for conscripts and hundreds of thousands never made it home. The Battle of New Chapelle. March 10, 1915, British shells literally rained down on German forces. For the first time, the technique creeping barrage was used, a barrage where the fire of all, unit, of all units targets the same position. That is so strange. Okay, for the first time, the technique creeping barrage was used, a barrage where the fire of all units targets the same position for a period before advancing one line at a time. The infantry's advance was synchronized at a safe distance behind the barrage so that German lines could then be overrun. That day, 530 cannons fired over 216,000 shells. That is to say, one shell per weapon every two minutes. Wow. The Garwal Rifles. In the early 20th century, Great Britain and France governed huge colonial empires and put them to use during the war. Indian troops were deployed by Britain in the Middle East as well as on the European front and made an important contribution to the war effort. Many victories were achieved thanks to their bravery and discipline in combat. A monument commemorating their sacrifice stands in Neuve-Chapelle, France. 
Trench life was difficult. Soldiers were confronted with cold, rain, and mud. Dirty water meant that diseases such as dysentery, typhus, and cholera flourished. The depth of the mud also presented dangers, and soldiers sometimes drowned in shell holes or in the tunnels leading to the trenches. Trench fortifications required the use of explosives. To penetrate enemy lines, long tunnels were dug under no man's land beneath enemy trenches, inside which explosives were placed. The English used cordite, a powerful explosive that could be detonated at a distance. That's just really interesting. Okay, that's not for the water. This is probably for the water. Oh. Nope. I see, okay. So they all lead to each other, so you see the, the pipe leading to this thing. And then, what do you know? Sausages. <laughs> Is it done? I guess we'll just take him the whole thing. Are you kidding? Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, look at this. Okay. Okay, buddy. All right, come with me. Be careful. Wow. Where's Carl? He's in the Zeppelin? Oh, great. Yeah, he sure is. Can we wedge this thing in as a uh, support? Or we need to find something different. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, cool, so we can use him to, uh... That's awesome. That's cool! He's just as excited as I am. Alright, you, you sit there. I'll see if I can bring you up somehow. Oh. Oh, I gotta be quick. I don't know if the dog has a name, but... Oh, no, what? Maybe I gotta jump on here. There we go. Let's go, buddy. In case he doesn't have a name, we're gonna name him Dexter. Dexter, go check out this hole here. I don't know where that where that just took you though. Oh well, there we go. It took you down here. Good work, Dex. Hey, what? Come with me. See there, buddy. Whoa. Uh-oh. What? 
You go inside. Whoa! Okay, so those are live- that's live ammo. No thanks. We'll go around. Valiant Stories Contest Memorabilia. Lace tightener made by Corporal Lucien de Fomantel, great-grandfather of Benoit Tidres, from a melted-down cartridge case. Lucien served as an electrician in a searchlight division whose mission was to illuminate enemy positions. Many thanks and congratulations to our winner, Benoit. Cool. Oh, there, you do come down on your own. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy, but we need to find something to throw up there. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, nice. Good work, boy. He got it again. Let's be careful. A crucifix. The majority of soldiers believed in God and some wore symbols of their religion. War offices had to make provisions for different religion, and a variety of religious ceremonies were performed at the front of different faiths. Priests, vicars, and rabbis offered succor and compassion to soldiers. Muslim soldiers from colonies were organized into separate battalions, for practical reasons and their beliefs were also respected. Halal food and uh, was provided as well as Muslim funeral services. See, that's really interesting, actually. Um, I know Muslims have a lot of different uh, specific beliefs, and so it does kind of make sense to keep them together because there's not just, you know, prayers and all that kind of stuff, but there's also food provisions and uh, specific things that they need. Okay, how are we gonna get past this? No! No! I didn't want to dig, I just wanted to see. You got another bone there, buddy? Here, give that to me. Let's just throw this towards it. Yeah, we did it, boy. Come on. You head inside, I'll make my way through. Hmm. Can you grab whatever that is? How do I... Hmm. There we go. What? What? Careful. Hey, what? Hmm. Maybe we can go around from the top? No, I don't know how to get up there. <laughs> oh yeah, he's beelining. Okay. Nothing we're gonna do to stop him now. Whoa, 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 what? chill, chill. What? It's okay, it's okay. Oh, you're kidding me. Minutes earlier on the other side of the front, you're kidding. The British troops continued their attack on Neuve Chapelle. Their next objective, take back Port Arthur. Okay, here's the American. Can 
Move! We got barbed wire. Hurry up! Keep moving, keep moving. Oh, thank you. We got some French coins. All troops were paid in the country of origin's currency and paid compensation in the local currency. Uh, the British earned one shilling a day, around 3.21 uh, Great Britain pounds, I guess they would be called, or 5.42 US dollars, $5.42 in nowadays currency. The standards, King's shilling and 20 francs every fortnight. Uh, these 20 francs had a face value of 40 pounds, roughly 50 euros to 70 US dollars. And we're using the main as the main currency with the locals eager to barter whatever few goods they could trade. Business always prevailed, so locals near the combat zone would agree on payment in foreign currencies as well. Hold on, what exactly are we blowing up here? Oh, we actually okay. Hold on. These aren't gonna blow anyways. Nothing's connected. Two, three, two. There. What? Two, three, two. I got my What are you doing? Is that doesn't make any sense. I got my Oh, I see. These are in bundles of different amounts. This is one. The f up there is three. This one's two. And now, okay, I understand. So this is the order. So he's actually at the second one. So I'll give him three. No, let's trade that. There we go. This way. Good work. <laughs> you want me to do the honors? Gladly. Just in case. <laughs> no grenades. Yeah, no live am ammo. <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard for me to say that. Uh, what do we got here? The Kukuri knife. Kukuri knife was used by the Gurkhas, the British unit comprised of colonial Indian troops. The Nepalese weapon was standard issue and became a symbol of the Empire forces. Its heavy, thick, and curved blade was designed for striking as well as cutting. Oh no! So we can see it from here. We gotta go! Whoa! Oh shit, is he down? No, he's okay. And since he saved us before, now we're gonna save him. It's okay, Dex. Both of us talking about our motivations for why we're here. Now we're both going to go find him, which takes us to the same place. 